Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Stu, Back to Bible Videos. Thanking God for this opportunity. His loving kindness, His tender mercy. We we'll acknowledge the Lord in all our ways. He may direct our path. We give God thanks for this video we're about to do right now. We're going to call your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah to God. We thank you for your word. This is a very powerful verse, short and powerful verse, which means so much. We know that the Most High God is holy, pure. There's no unrighteousness in him. He is the definition of truth and holiness. And liberty is a word for freedom. Liberated means being set free from restrictions for your edification and background purposes of this chapter, it talks about Moses and the veil and the certain restrictions of the Old Testament being done away in Christ. But this purpose of this video is to talk about today in particular of the restrictions that we ourselves have imposed on us, on ourselves, willingly or ignorantly. And the word of God clearly says and is right and it, the word is right. Now, the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Glory to God. There is connect a, a free flow of connection. To go into a, a, a natural term, like I said, I do cabling and I do I do I do cabling work and dealing with voltage and have it, have it, or even you in your garden, you want to use a hose. The hose is connected to the, to the, 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 the spigot, whatever you want to call it. I'm a country boy. So the, the connection, you turn the water on and it flows and that water has come out shooting with force and freedom. But if you bend it at a certain angle, the full the flow of the water is not going to come out with as much freedom and 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 fluidity and force and if you crimp it in another place it gets weaker and weaker and then if you keep if you tighten it or crimp it or fold it so much no water will come out no flow no freedom no liberty for the water to flow through the hose because if you look and examine, oh, there's a knot here. There's a knot there. And so you free up those knots and those kinks, then, hallelujah to God, there could be a complete flow. And what we see in a lot of movements, churches, organizations, what you will, you may see a flow, but not a full flow. Glory to God in the highest. You may see some water and may, but then, and since we see that, we are content with, oh, yeah, we, we, water is coming through the holes, but not with that freedom. And it takes the most high God to whoever he choose to open the eyes of his people to show, hey, there's a knot there, or, or we're not going to get the full flow. The full liberty. There's a there's a bend here. There's a a wedge there. Yeah, we still seeing some water, but not fully that full liberty. And in some places, the knots are so tight they're not getting anything. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now I want to talk about some of those knots. Some of those kinks that is dis disrupting the, the liberty. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. And we begin at, let's begin at verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus... You who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Talking about the Gentiles. 
For he is our peace, who hath made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. See, there was a kink there. Now there's a flow. Since Jesus Christ came and broke down that, that knot, he took that knot between the Jews and the Gentiles so there can be a flow of relationship and fellowship through the spirit because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He broke down that middle wall of petition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom all. Ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the spirit. This is talking about us, our body, not the building. Now, as you can see, Jesus Christ broke down that middle wall of partition. But yet, some of us willingly and ignorantly have put these petitions back in place that Jesus Christ has broken down. As we look at how the Apostle Paul approached the brethren in Ephesus. And this is what we need to practice, folks. We need to practice what is written. And it won't be all these discrepancies. If you profess to be a believer, my question to you is, have you received the Holy Ghost since you became a believer? That's number one. Either you would say, no, not yet. I'm tearing. I'm waiting to be filled. But how were you baptized? I was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You ought to be able to tell me that if you say you're a believer. First thing, let me let me digress a little bit. First thing, in order for us to have a, com com a, 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 a productive conversation, first of all, are you a believer? Do you even believe in God? Hallelujah to God. Then we can go down the steps. His, his son, Jesus Christ, who came to die on the cross, the, the death, the resurrection, the, the life, the death, the resurrection, the ascension of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. That we, and what he preached, that we can get to the baptism and, th and those things. But that's what that's how the conversation ought to begin. If you say you're a believer, oh, you're a believer? Oh, yeah. Oh, have you received the Holy Ghost? Yes. How? It's not being, being rude. Is this there's only one body of Christ and there's only one gospel for salvation. Yes, many false prophets have have gone out and deceived many. That's why if, until we and that's why we that, that God has blessed with the knowledge and understanding of what's required for the New Testament. These are valid questions. OK, so we know, OK. Then I can number one, I can have fellowship with this person or understand where they're coming from. OK, OK. They fully don't understand. Then it's our duty to testify to them of the truth, whether they accept or reject. Since so many false prophets are going on the world, it's a it's a valid question. Okay, you will believe. Okay, what? Is, have you been baptized? Have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? But so that's one way, and. The barriers that have come up. Now, that's not even what's asked. First thing they ask you is, what's your faith? What church do you go to? What church do you go to? We have been programmed by this system to think this way. Oh, what church do you go to? Oh, I go to such and such Baptist. Oh, I go to such and such um, Methodist. I go to such and such Apostolic. Oh, I go to whatever, whatever, Anglican church. 
or they say, oh, what, what, de what denomination are you? That's not the proper question, because if they ask you what type of denomination, unknowingly, they already know that you are part of something that is less than what was originally created by God. And I tell people like, no, I'm not a denomination, which it be, to be to be honest in my ignorance, knowing now when I say apostolic and say, oh, we are non-denominational. That is not the truth, because apostolic Pentecostal is all denominations. So these are these these petitions that we have ignorantly put in place to stop the flow of the liberty. You may be like, how, um, Brother Stu? How? Because if you are teaching or accepting and calling something that is something that is the church based on something that is not written, that is a that's a little kink. You may still feel the flow of the water, but that's a kink. You may be like, how? Because denominations divide, folks. Because there's no such there's no denomination in the scripture. Either you in the body of Christ, and that's it. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in water, buried with him by baptism, and receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the Spirit of God give utterance. That puts you into the body of Christ. That is the church. Anything else a part of that is not the church. I don't care about the building. I don't care about the name on the door. The baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and being filled with the Holy Ghost, that adds you to the church. That is, you are members of his body. Built as for inhabitation of God through the spirit. The spirit adds to the body. It's, it's ignorantly, I don't want to seem like this is a harsh or rebuke because it's, it's ignorant. We all went through it. We all go through it. And we all grow at different levels. Oh, I'm looking for a church to join. Because the church I was going to is not right. What, you say, what you're saying is the denomination, the organization is not right. Because the church is fine. The body, if you understand the truth, true meaning of what the church is. We say, I want to join this church. No, you can't join the church. You have to be born in her. You have to be born into the body of Christ. You have to be added through by the spirit. If you say, oh, I want to be a member here. That's all you are. You just a member of an organization, a denomination. And you've aligned yourself with something less than what you are should be a part of. So now when I see a, a another believer, I have to look at them at first. My first thing is, okay, where did they go? But there should be, if they are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost, just like I am, there ought to be an automatic flow and connection in the spirit. But we put these middle petitions there and say, oh, because they have on that color, they're not like us. Or they don't go to the same organization as me then they not it's not the same thing or they may be this complexion uh they're caucasian or they're african american or they're latino nah, nah. those are self-imposed partitions that we have put in place that christ broke down now we look at restrictions cuz i as i have been doing a lot of research and more and more Thanks be to God, eyes are opening more to this. Uh, but let me see if I say it right. Um, the four, the four wall system. I believe that's what what it's called, which I understand the meaning and the restrictions that go go along with this four wall system, four wall system. Because I'm looking at the Word of God which we ought to do is that the apostles never did this stuff. What we doing today? Oh, in order for you to be recognized by the government as a church, you have to do X, Y, and Z. Who cares if you don't recognize us as a church? We are the body. 
they, they you they want see this the, this thank you lord they want to recognize the building and the organization but not the people who are really the church and that is the system that is set up and that causes restrictions and limits to the flow of liberty I don't care if you don't recognize me and the, the saints of God getting together. We can be getting together right outside in my yard and read and worship and give the most high God his his due glory. And people say, oh, what y'all doing? We having service. Oh, y'all have they would say, oh, y'all having church. Glory to God in the highest. Commonly, they're like, they, they don't see no building. They don't see no whatever, whatever. They see the people of God, the church together having service. That's how it's supposed to be. Preaching, teaching, worshiping. People say, oh, nobody, nobody would say, oh, what's the name of y'all church? The name is Jesus Christ because that's it's his body. So the church's name is Jesus Christ. I mean, but it, um, what's the name of the, um, the, the organization? No, nah, there should be no organization. Who's, who's, what's the name of the church? The name of the church is Jesus Christ. But since, because we want the legalities, the, of the, we want the, the government to um, recognize our institution. So that's why we have to have a different name because, oh, if I have the church of Stu and there's another student up there, he said, well, you since there's already trademark and license, we already recognize this guy. For as his church of stew, you have to have church of stew something else plus two. So we can recognize you being different from that one. You hear you hear that? Recognize you being different from that one. And we say, oh, that was back then. We can't do that now. We just can't say, oh, based on the location. People around the world today are doing it because all the governments of the world do not subject their people to this. It's usually in, in the Western world because I, I speak to my wife and the people in the Caribbean. They have buildings and they are free. They don't have this this tax stuff. They just go there and do and have their service. They're not. It's not it may not be recognized by the by their government, but they don't bother. It's not like that. It's not that it's, it's not set up there. And people like to look down upon, they call them third world countries that make them seem like demoralize them and like they're not as as sophisticated as the as the as the first world countries. But actually, they are ahead because the first world countries come up with these things. And that's where a lot of the restrictions come. And people in like La the Latino communities in Mexico and other, they don't have those type of restrictions. I don't know, but I'm just speaking hypothetically. All I can speak on is the Caribbean. Because I asked, they don't have that 501c3 there. They don't get help from the government. They don't seek help from the government. They have their building. They built it themselves. The people come there, and that's it. They can preach. They can preach the, the fullness with liberty. But if you're if you're concerned with losing your status then how can you be free in your speech, in your preaching? You may feel a certain flow, but not fully. The same thing with Jews and Gentiles and these people who want to still keep the law. I mean, you know, we still want to keep the law. And I, I want to ask, OK, do you believe in keeping all the law or some of the law? If you think you can believe in keeping all the law, then, then the word of God said, if you think you can be saved under the law, then why did Christ come? Because, first of all, I'm going to tell all of you, take it however you want. None of us can keep the law. That's why he had to come. That's why he came, because we cannot keep the law. If we can keep it, if we could have kept it, then we will be still under the Old Testament. Now, if you're saying, okay, we don't keep, we don't believe in all the law, 
we believe is some of the law. Hmm. Okay. Then, that, then we need to define what, what that is. So people like to harp on the law, but then, and then, and they, and, they, and they ignore the fact that we can't keep the law. Because I believe the Apostle Paul says right here. Yes, I want to get it. I want to get it. Christ has redeemed us. All right, that's what I wanted. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith and the law is not of faith. The man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You got some people out there trying to put that middle wall between us. Put us try to bring us back unto bondage, where the Spirit has given us liberty. People still are doing that today. Not, not also with this new stuff that's going on. With 501, the tax exempt and the four wall system and 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 believe in compelling the, the people that they, they should get out and vote for these politicians. You still got some people that still separate Jew and Gentile and and some people who still want to keep the law and impose dietary and things like that on the folks. And then you wonder why there's no unity and no flow of the spirit because these are all knots in the in the holes. Glory to God. These are all knots in the holes. All knots. And you may think, well, somebody's shouting, somebody may because because you know why? You know why this happens in the midst of us? Why someone still gets baptized? In the in the, the right way in the name of Jesus Christ and why people still get filled with the 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 pure Holy Ghost speaking of the tongues the Spirit of God gave utterance in the midst of all this don't think it's because of us it's because God is the one who adds to His body that's why it still happens they're like oh we're still being blessed yeah it's a that you are a recipient glory to God of of the goodness of God not because you 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 are, we are fully Glory to God. We're fully connected. That's why we have to be so careful and be humble. That's why a lot of so-called churches are complacent. Is it? Oh, we have thousands. We have so much um, thousands of people. We're blessed. We have money. We have this. We build in a school. We build in this. We're they, so they so the things that should be valued more than the exterior things becomes more priority and a measure of your status based on the things that you have and not with the full flow and connection with God, which is more important. I know I'm kind of going over the, all over the place, but thank you. Thank you, Lord. We want to be recognized by the government. We ought to be more concerned with being recognized by God. Who cares if this if, if if I have if I have the saints gather in my home, I don't have no restrictions there. They can't come to me and tell me what I can't preach or what I can't say. I'm not saying that, you know, we we ought to fellowship one another. There should be that we can assemble together in a place. Even if the government doesn't recognize it, they can't bother us because we have a register with them. That's the same thing the apostles went through because they were going against the, 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 the leadership of the time. They were persecuted for that because they really knew they couldn't do anything to them. Because they have confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in this land, that they were in the world, but not of it. That's why they were like, don't teach in his name. Okay, what what Peter say? Whom should we obey? God or men? And he went right out and preached because they, okay, you can't stop us. But if you associate yourself with them and be recognized by them, then 
you are owned by them. And I love the, the brother, he said, it's called a free church, a free, that is sounds so beautiful. A free church is not recognized by them, but who cares? That they don't want to give us any, that they, we can't go to them for money. Who cares? We shouldn't go to them for money anyway. The apostles, the, the, the body of Christ didn't in the scripture. And these are our brothers and sisters. This is the example that we all should ought to follow. Don't give me that about, oh, that was then. You have to do it now for legal purposes. For legal purposes? Why? And you ask the question, if you get it down to the integrity, why do you want to be rec recognized by them? Oh, because so we just tax exempt status so we can, you know, get money for the church. Oh, so you couldn't do it before. You don't, you, you don't, you, you, we ought to work together with him. The, the people gave their, brought their land and possessions and gave it to the apostles and they distributed. They didn't have to get nothing from Caesar. Is they, why? You know why they had to get anything from Caesar? Because they gave Caesar what was Caesar's. They paid their coins. They paid their, they say, here, here you go. This is what you want here. Here it is. Glory to God in the highs. And that's it. That's what Jesus told him. You give the Caesar what Caesar's. And the thing to God, to God. That's, that's pretty much it, um, folks. So we're still learning. And I don't like, and I don't, don't ever want to come off as a know-it-all because I'm still learning. A lot of these things, I used to see it and then I ain't paying no attention. But thanks be to God, he helped me to open my eyes to slowly see glory to God and I'm still growing. And that's the beauty of it. It said, the Bible said, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the, of the Son of God. And he said, groweth, groweth into unholy temple in the Lord. So pray for us. We mean well in the name of Jesus Christ.